Good morning, church. So glad to have you with us this morning. Thank y'all for joining us at Cedar Rock Church Jackson. Uh, it is a cold, wet, stormy day. Uh, we've had some storms this morning. It looks like it's going to continue throughout the day. And then there's a possibility of severe storms this evening as we had last Sunday night. And so just ask that everyone would please be safe. Uh, stay home unless you absolutely have to get out. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I just ask as we pray and you know uh, your needs and uh, uh, the needs of uh, folks at church. And so we want you to lift those up. And I just ask you to pray for me this morning. Uh, with all this pollen around, I've been having my typical sinus issues for this time of the year. And so uh, my voice does get scratchy and I begin to cough. And uh, so I just pray that my voice would hold out to allow us to deliver the message God would have for us to hear this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are truly grateful for this day. We thank you so much for allowing us to come together, Lord. And again, we are not together physically in this building, but we are together in spirit, and we are together online. And I just ask that you would bless God. Bless those that are watching right now. Bless those that will be watching later on today and in the days to come, God. And again, we thank you that we have the opportunity to put this type of media out that others would hear your word, not just the members of this church or the members of other churches, Lord, but those that maybe can't come to church, Lord, or, or for other reasons won't. Uh, we pray that they would hear this message today, hear the message of other churches and other pastors, and that you would bless God. We pray that your word would go forth today, Lord God. That you would touch our hearts and minds and that we would be receptive to receive that that we need to receive from you. God, I ask that you would bless us today and touch us in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, well, again, we lift up the situation in the world with this virus or whatever it is that's going on. God, I ask that you would uh, be in the midst of it, that uh, you would bring it to an end soon. God, we pray you would strengthen your people through this. And that we would be light in this dark world. Show people that there is no need to fear because we know Jesus. Lord, we pray for our emergency workers again, our first responders, our nurses, our doctors, all those that are on the front line. Whether they're in hospitals or nursing homes or out on the road, Lord, uh, going from call to call. Whatever the case may be, God, would you bless them, bless their families. And keep them, Lord. We're truly grateful again for your blessing. Help us now, Father, as we go into your word. And we ask it in the precious holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 If you have your Bible this morning, I pray you do. If you'll open to the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, chapter 5. The second book of the Bible in the Old Testament, the book of Exodus, chapter 5. I'll give you just a moment to turn. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 5, and we'll look at verses 1 and 2. And let me just set this up real quick. Uh, Moses has been called by God to go set his people free that are enslaved in Egypt. And so Moses and Aaron have met in chapter 4 with the <clears throat> heads, the leaders of the people, and told them what God's plan is. Now they have come to Moses, or um, I'm sorry, come to Pharaoh. And so... Uh, this first meeting with Pharaoh, it says in verse 1 of chapter 5, And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. May God bless the reading of his word. <clears throat> the title of my message today is, Who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? And so I want to look at the two statements in uh, verse 2 of chapter 5 that Pharaoh said. Again, Moses and Aaron have come to Pharaoh, and they have said, The Lord says, Let my people go. 
Now, if you look on your Bible, you'll see that word Lord is in all capital letters. Uh, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Whenever you see that in the Bible, that is referring to the name of God, Jehovah. The name of God, Jehovah, it is showed as Lord in the Bible because uh, it is believed that the, uh, by uh, some Jewish people that the name of God was so holy and so righteous that they could not even pronounce it because they were sinful people. And so instead of uh, uh, writing it out or saying it, <coughs> they would often just use Lord. And so here we see that Moses is not referring to some generic God, but he is referring to the God of Israel, the one true God, the God of the Bible, Jehovah God. Many today pronounce his name Yahweh, and there's some debate as to which is the proper pronunciation, but I uh, was raised with Jehovah, and so that is what I'll continue to use unless someone can show me better. And so Moses is saying here, listen, Jehovah, the God of Israel, is telling you, Pharaoh, to let my people go. And Pharaoh makes two very profound statements in the second verse. And the first statement he says is, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice? Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let my people to go? And so I want to concentrate on that first uh, sentence this morning. Pharaoh says, Who is the Lord? That's uh, Pharaoh's attitude. As a matter of fact, if I could put that in modern language today... What Pharaoh is really saying is he is saying, who does Jehovah think he is to tell me what to do? Who does this Jehovah think that he is? And let me tell you today that that is a problem with the world today. That is a problem with the world throughout time, but especially the day that we live in. Oh, we Christians have a message. We have the Word of God, and we go out, and we try to share the Word of God with other people. Uh, we have pastors that preach on the radio, and, and some good ones even that preach on TV. And they give out tracts, and they put the Word out, and they go and they witness, and they talk to people. And you have some that are receptive, but for the most part, the world, and many people in the world, most people in the world say, either I don't know God, and we'll talk more about that in just a minute, or they'll say, well, yes, I heard of this God, and maybe they'll even acknowledge that there is some sort of God or divine being out there. They may think it's something else. They, uh, you know, of course, many worship the, the earth today and the mother goddess and all of this other garbage that people do today. They may be some acknowledgement of something out there, but they will come back and say, who does this God think he is to tell me what to do? And we see that throughout our nation today. We see that in our government as they make the rules. Uh, not just here in the United States, but throughout the world. People say we have the right to worship God freely. And they say, who is Jehovah to tell us what we can do about allowing you people to worship or not? Uh, we want to gather on a particular day on this building. Well, who is this Jehovah that can tell us that? Uh, we uh, tell you that Jehovah believes that abortion is murder and it is a sin against him. It is in violation of God. God's word is in violation of God's very being. And yet you have people today that thumb their nose at God and say, who is this Jehovah right. to tell me I can't have an abortion? Who is this Jehovah that can tell me uh, that I can't commit adultery or that I can't uh, uh, sleep around with as many people as I want, that I can't steal, that I can't kill somebody, that I can't worship anything or any God that I want to. Who is this Jehovah to tell me that I as a homosexual can't get married, those that say that, or I can't... Um, uh, feel like a man and be a woman or be a woman and feel like a man or dress however I want to dress. And that is the, the thoughts of the world today. They say, who is this God that can tell me what to do? That's right. And we see this with Pharaoh here because really that's what he's saying. Who does your God think that he is? Oh, we've seen that elsewhere throughout the Bible. We have seen people that they 
challenged Israel when they got into the promised land and, and there would be kings that would come to attack them and they would say, uh, who is the God that can save you from my hand? And guess what? Those kings lost most of the time because they right. dared to question who God was. Mm -hmm. I, was I was thinking about it this morning. I was thinking even in the book of Daniel, in Daniel chapter 3, we know that King Nebuchadnezzar created a giant statue of himself and he says that, that people needed to bow down when they heard music and they needed to worship that statue and there were three young men Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego right. that refused to bow down and worship and so people uh, ran to the king and said hey there's these three Hebrews and they're not bowing down and so he has called them to himself and he has told them listen when you hear the sound of the music you need to bow down and at the end of Daniel 3, verse 15, listen to what Nebuchadnezzar says. He says, if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? So these three young men say, we have a God that we worship. We worship Jehovah. He alone we worship. He alone is the one that we bow down to. We have never bowed down to your gods. We have never bowed down to you. You can put up any statue you want. You can play any music you want. Nebuchadnezzar, you can do anything that you want to do. But we will not bow down and worship. And you will find out whether we live or die exactly who that God is. Amen. That will take care of the situation. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar was infuriated at what happened. He threw those three young men into the furnace. And then he looked in and told one of his commanders, he said, did we not throw three in? And yet I see four and one looks like the Son of Man. Because the Lord himself showed up. Amen. It was with those three men. In other words, the Lord said, Nebuchadnezzar, let me tell you who I am. Pharaoh found out. Through many plagues and many things that struck his land, exactly who Jehovah God is. You see, Pharaoh, uh, the Pharaohs were considered gods. Right. And so he thought, who is the God that would dare come up against me? Well, he found out exactly who that God was. He found out again through many things that struck his land. He found out through plagues that came down and eventually through the death of the firstborn at the first Passover. Pharaoh found out exactly who Jehovah God is. And can I tell you today that if the world does not repent and open their eyes and acknowledge Jehovah God, they too are going to find out exactly who he is. Right. Many of them are finding out now. There's a big debate on the radio. I hear various preachers. Is this COVID-19? Is it a punishment from God? Is it something that has come from God because of how the world has acted? And uh, some say yes it is, and some say no it's not. And, uh, and I would say ultimately that yes it is. I have said before that everything that happens in this world, whether it's a tornado or earthquake, uh, we had a bunch of tornadoes last week, uh, there's been earthquakes, uh, there are people that are starving. There have been uh, tsunamis and, and all these things, droughts and floods. And now we've had other pandemics, the Spanish flu, H1N1, um, polio, and now we have COVID-19. And yes, we live in a sin-sick world, and these things are the results of a sin-sick world. But they also are a judgment from God because of of the sin of this world. Right. <clears throat> and so, people had best open their eyes. Many have opened their eyes and said, oh, maybe we need to reevaluate our thoughts on this God. But unfortunately, not enough have. Mm. And so judgment will continue. Oh, this pandemic will pass, but then another will come. And it'll be like 9-11. If you remember, after all of that happened, every church just about in the land was filled with people right. praying and crying out to God. Unfortunately, most of the world got over it. Yeah. 
Most of the people that showed up in those churches are no longer in churches. Why? Because they were scared at a time and they called out to God, but then they got back in their routine and now they're back to saying, who is this God that tell me what to do? Right. And so just as Pharaoh found out, if people aren't careful and they don't repent and they don't get saved, they too are going to find out. Right. But then we have a second problem. Not only is this attitude in the world today, but unfortunately this attitude is in many churches today. Right. Remember, Christian, remember the church. We are supposed to be the example. We are the salt. We are the light. We are supposed to be the ones that go out and influence the world introduce the world to God and show people exactly who Jehovah God is. Right. Exactly who our Lord Jesus Christ, who is God manifest in the flesh, is. And yet this prevailing attitude that is in the world is also in the church today. Because you have many pastors, many deacons and elders and church members and Sunday school teachers that say, you know what? Who does this God think he is to tell us how to run the church, to tell us how to worship, to tell us what's right, to tell us what's wrong? Who does this God think we is? Yes, we represent this God, or we say we do. Right. The people that come to this church have heard it preached on a regular basis, probably sick of hearing it. Right. But in this day and time, they need to hear it on a regular basis. Amen. There are people that don't believe that the Bible is the Word of God. And I am talking about Christian pastors. Right. At least they call themselves Christians. They stand in churches that call themselves Christians. And they say, oh, uh, we read this Word, but we really don't believe it's the Word of God. We don't believe that it's literally true. We don't believe that it's historically accurate. Uh, uh, uh. So I ask, why do they bother at all? They say, oh, we can allow homosexuals in as pastors. We can allow cross-dressers in as pastors. Don't dare you, God, tell us how to run our church. Mm -mm. Who do you think you are? How do I know this is prevailing? Well, I see preachers on TV and on YouTube all the time. Right. I read their messages. I read statements that they make. And not just preachers, but also those that attend church on a regular basis. Right. Or they claim that they're Christian. Yeah. Let me read a quote from an interview by Governor Cuomo. I believe it was last Monday or Tuesday. I don't remember the exact day. Who says he's a Christian. Who is a member of a Roman Catholic church. And yet listen to what he says about this disease. In this interview, Governor Cuomo, it says, also mentioned a decline in other areas, talking or such as ICU admissions. However, he stressed that these positive signs were there only, catch that word, only, because of the policies imposed and the behavior of the people. You can turn those numbers, you can turn those numbers on two or three days of reckless behavior. It's like being on a diet, says Cuomo. Now listen to this. It, talking about the plateau, is directly a result of what you do today, he said. The number is down because we brought the number down. God did not do that. Wow. Faith did not do that. Destiny did not do that. A lot of pain and suffering did that. Mm -mm -mm. Can you believe the words out of a politician's mouth? One that claims that he believes in the God of the Bible, believes in Jehovah God, who at one time was a practicing Roman Catholic who says he still is Catholic. Mm -mm -mm. And would make a statement like that. The only reason that he was able to talk that 
day is because of Jehovah God. The only reason he is breathing today is because of that Jehovah God. The only reason this entire world has not been struck dead by this pandemic is because of Jehovah God. And yet here's Cuomo saying, who does this God think he is? He didn't do this. We did this from our own hard work. Well, who gave you the strength to do the hard work to start with, Governor? But that is a prevailing attitude in some of the churches today. And that is the problem. Churches like this one that preach the word of God. They say, listen, if God said it, you better do it or else. That's right. And there's very few of us left in the world today. Amen. Because so many are either preaching health and wealth. Or preaching that God really doesn't care. Or preaching that God doesn't exist. Or preaching you can worship any God. There are many paths to God. Mm. And these things are all being said in churches that are called Christian churches. And yet they continue to say all of these things. Mm. We need churches to repent today. Amen. We need church members to to repent. We need pastors to repent. Yep. I was reading an article the other day, or it may have been in a book I was reading, and they were talking about the fact that many pastors refuse to preach the devil anymore, refuse to preach on hell anymore. There are many churches that have been years since their members have heard their pastor preach on hell. Mm. But there are some churches, this church is one of them, and I'm not bragging, but I preach the Word of God. Amen. My church members have heard about hell. They have heard about the enemy Satan, and then he seeks to come out and try to destroy us because he hates us. That's right. And as long as I have breath in my body, I will preach against those things, and I will preach Jehovah God and the Lord Jesus Christ. And he being the only way of salvation. Amen. Because what other message is there except for the one that the word of God gives us? And I've said before, I believe every bit of this. I believe from the very first page when I open it up, it says presented to all the way to the very back uh, where it shows a map. And everything in between. I believe this book. That's right. And I believe it comes from God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Right. Every single word. Even the stuff I don't understand. Amen. Woe unto those preachers that stand before God one day preaching the garbage that they preach. Right. And refusing to stand on the word of God. So Pharaoh here says, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? In other words, who does this Jehovah think he is? Now let's look at the second statement. He then says, I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And so the second statement is, I know not the Lord. You see, what did he do? He just diagnosed his problem. Amen. The reason he has the audacity to say, who is Jehovah, that I should obey him, is because he knows not Jehovah. He does not know the true God. We can say, well, you know, he's there in Egypt, and Egypt's never heard of Jehovah God, but I beg to differ. If you go back to Genesis, starting at chapter 37, all the way to chapter 50, you find out about a guy named Joseph. We just studied him in this church a couple months back. Right. And Joseph, through the power of God, could interpret dreams, and he interpreted a dream for Pharaoh that was alive at that time. Mm. And that Pharaoh himself said, the power of God is on this man. Right. And he made him second in command in all of Egypt during that time. You think this Pharaoh didn't know about that? Oh yeah, he knew about that. He knew about the history of his people. But at the same time, he refused to acknowledge because he really 
didn't know, but he found out. That's right. The problem in the world today is, yes, they really don't know God. Oh, you have a lot of people that say they know God. Uh, they say, yes, we know who this Jehovah God. We know the God of the Bible. But the God of the Bible is, is not so narrow-minded as you claim he is. But he loves everybody. They think he's a big old uh, uh, fat, round, happy grandfather up in the air. Or he's the, the smiling hippie saying peace to everybody. But it was Jesus, not me, that said, I am the only way to the Father. Amen. It is Jesus, not me, that said, the road is narrow. The gate is narrow, and few there be the pass therein. Amen. People always want to get on to all you old fundamentalist preachers. I didn't say it. God said it. Right. I'm merely reading it and passing it along. The world today still doesn't know who God is. Why? Same reason as Pharaoh at the other day, he really didn't want to know who God was because he didn't want to acknowledge that there was a true God that was mightier and more powerful than he was mm -hmm. by the gods that he worshipped. And it's the same today with people. They really don't want to know God. Right. I've said before, you can get on the radio waves and you can talk about God, the generic God, all you want, and they don't have a problem. You can talk about Muhammad. You can talk about Buddha. Uh, um, you can talk about all these other religious texts. Everything's fine. But as soon as you mention Jesus, people get upset. Right. I've said before, because when you hear the name Jesus, when you find out about the name Jesus, you have to make a decision. You can no longer straddle the fence. You can no longer say, well, I believe this or I believe that. But no, you make a decision. Either you follow him or you don't follow him. You cannot serve two masters. Amen. And yet many people want to serve the God that they want to serve. And can I tell you, the number one God that is worshipped in this world today some of them may just hollered out money. Money probably runs a close second. The number one God that is worshipped today is the God of self. Mm. The God of self. Because at the end of the day, we want to say it's all about me. And if I don't like Jesus' way to get to heaven, then I'm going to choose my own way whether he likes it or not. Because who is he to tell me what to do? <laughs> but we're to expect this in the last days. Let me remind you again of 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lover of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Mm. Now what did you hear throughout all of that? Me, I, me, I, I, me. It's all about me. Every one of those was focused on self. Uh, because, again, that is the prevailing attitude in the world today. It is all about me and what I want and what I want to do. It is not all about you. Hmm. Where did that come from? Isaiah 14, beginning in verse 12. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which does weaken the nations? Listen now. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Mm -mm -mm. Satan is full of himself. And so the prevailing attitude when he gets into the world and he's in the world. Yep. And when he convinces people is just as he said, I Will, I want, it's all about me. So is the prevailing attitude today. That's right. 
Most people, God is themselves. You don't believe me? Those of you that are on Facebook, go look at how many selfies are on Facebook right mm. now. Mm -mm -mm. And some post every five and ten minutes. Mm. Everywhere they go. Remember, used to when we went on vacation, you'd go out to the Grand Canyon. And what would you do? You'd take a picture of the Grand Canyon. Now there's a picture of you with a little bit of the candy behind you. Why? Because it's about me! Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It's not about God and His magnificent creation anymore. The only one that can say it's about me is the Lord Jesus Christ yeah. who died for our sins. So we see that He did not know the Lord Himself. Just as the world does it today. Mm. So, now my last two points and I'll close. Who is the Lord? Let me answer Pharaoh's question. Who is the Lord? Well, the Bible tells us in the book of Revelation that he is king of kings. And he is Lord of lords. Amen. The Bible tells us that he was manifest in the flesh on this earth. A matter of fact, you can go back to the very first book of this Bible. Mm. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Mm. Moses doesn't set out and say, let me tell you who God is. Let me tell you there's one main God and here's what he's about. No, the Bible simply says, in the beginning, God. That's right. In the beginning, God. Because you see, at the beginning of creation, even as man, well, even after sin first came in the world, everybody knew God. That's right. They may have disobeyed him, but they knew him. Yep. They knew exactly who Jehovah God was. He was the creator of heaven and earth. Who was this God? Well, I would encourage you to get yourself this book called the Holy Bible. Mm. Right. And I would encourage you to open it and begin to read it. Where should you begin? Well, I would tell you to go to the book of John. Mm -hmm. The Gospel of John. Go to the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and then John. Read the Gospel of John over the next 30 days. Read it as much as you can every day. If you read the whole thing the first day, go in the second day and start reading again. And throughout it all, pray, God, show yourself to me. And I promise you, before you get to day 30, God will show himself to you. Mm. because the book the gospel of John shows us exactly who God is Amen. shows us exactly who the Lord Jesus Christ is That's right. and show you why he came to the earth you're all familiar with the verse I've quoted it several times since we started doing this video and you've probably heard it so much. That, and that's the problem. We hear so much, we say it without thinking about it. Mm. Think about those words, John 3, 16. Yeah? For God, so what? Loved the world. Amen. That what? He sent his only begotten son, Jesus. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right. But see, we also ignore the rest of that uh, passage because it says, whosoever does not believe. Mm. Folks, for those that don't believe, damnation has come. That's right. Who is this God? He is the mighty God. He is the one true God. He is the creator of heavens and earth and everything that you see, including yourself. He sustains the world. As I mentioned earlier about Pharaoh, I say again about you. You're breathing right now because of God. You're right. opening your eyes if you can see because of God. You are hearing this message if you can hear because of God. Amen. And if nothing you did of yourself, the same with salvation, there is nothing you can do of yourself. And then unfortunately, my second point is yes, you really don't know. Mm. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, or you refuse to accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, if He is drawing you to Himself and you have not accepted, mm. you refuse, 
you really don't know. The world really doesn't know who Jesus is. Yep. One day, everyone's going to find out. Amen. Again, the Bible tells us one day, every knee shall bow. Right. In heaven, on earth, under the earth, that will be hell. One day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I would much rather be kneeling in worship in heaven Amen. than kneeling in hell acknowledging that Jesus is exactly who he said he was. All right. One day, even all of these demons one day, even Satan himself will bow his knee before Jesus and say, yes, you are Lord. Right. Why follow him into the pits of hell mm. and bow the knee when you can do it in worship in heaven? Oh, I don't believe hell. I don't believe judgment comes. Well, again, you can go into this book called the Bible and read all about judgment. Amen. Go into the book of Matthew and read about the worm dying not and the fire not being quenched. Go in the book of Revelation where it says the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever mm. and ever. Go in the book of Daniel where it talks about the books being opened and judgment being given. Yep. And then let me read you one more passage of scripture and I'll close. And speaking of judgment in Joel chapter 3 verses 11 through 16. Listen to what God led this prophet to write. Joel chapter 3, 11 through 16. He says, Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about, thither cause thy mighty ones, uh, cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the heathen round about. Did you hear that? God has said, for I will come and judge all the heathen round about. It's called the right. great white throne judgment in the book of Revelation. Right. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get ye down, for the press is full. The fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion in order to utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Mm. Did you hear verse 14? Listen again as the prophet Joel wrote. You can almost hear the anguish in his voice. He's talking about the judgment to come. And he cries out. It's a multitude. Multitude in the valley of decision. Right. He says, oh God, look at all those that are being judged because they didn't believe in you. Right. You can hear the anguish in the anguish. All because they refuse to accept who God was. Who he is. Right. In other words, there will be many Pharaohs standing before God that day. Amen. And they will find out. Because just before they die, they say, who is the Lord to tell me what to do? Uh -huh. And then they die. And they go, oh. This is who God is. But as I mentioned the other week, it'll be too late. There is no do-over. There is no, Lord, forgive me. Can I get saved now? I understand the truth. There is no, I want a second chance. There is no rebirth. There is no reincarnation. The Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and after that judgment. Amen. Today, if he is calling your name. Today, if you feel that tug on your heart, 
Today, if Jesus says today, don't wait. Did you hear that call? Today is the day of salvation. Right. Maybe you are backslidden. Today is the day to repent and draw near to God again. Today is the day. Amen. Who is the Lord? Don't wait until it's too late to find out. Right. Because it will be too late. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this day. God, I again pray that someone would hear this message that needed to hear it today. Someone that maybe doesn't know Jesus as Savior. Let this day be the day of salvation. Let them no longer be as Pharaoh that says, who is this Lord? I don't know him. Mm -hmm. Let them come to know you today, God. Pharaoh said he refused to let God's people go, and yet he was the one that was truly captured. And God, you would have freely offered him the salvation and freedom you gave to your people, but he refused to accept it. Hmm. Let us not be the same. Let people repent. Hmm. Let their eyes, their minds, and their hearts be open today hmm. to realize that they are lost and in need of a Savior. And God, that you love them so much that you sent your Son. And they just repent and cry out for salvation. You'll save them, God. Turn from that sin. Confess that sin to God. Lord, you'll forgive them and you'll save them. Touch today, Father. Help us again in the church not to give in to all these voices telling us don't say that and don't do this because it's not politically correct. Mm. Because it may offend people. Lord, your word offended me before I got saved. Mm. The gospel is offensive. But so is surgery to remove a cancer. Mm. It offends the body, and yet once that cancer is removed, the body is healed. Mm. Let us as Christians stand strong, believe in your word, and stand on it. Let those that are in churches get saved that aren't saved. Even pastors standing in pulpits need salvation today. Let that happen today, God, and we ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. 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 May God bless you.